Hello, Namaste. My name is Dr. Neil Pandey and I practice in Kathmandu, Nepal. And I'm here to share some of my thoughts on a topic that is very, very burning right now. Stress-free dentistry. Whoa, stress-free dentistry? Is it really possible? So I'm here to share some of the insights that over the years of experience I have gathered, but at the same time, I'm here to learn from all of you. So if you have anything in between, please do put in the comment box and I'll really love to interact with you in every regard. Thank you. Let's move on. Now what's stress? Now stress, you know, at the definition's sake, it's, it's, a, it's a change that causes physical, emotional, or psychological strain, right? It could be in the form of physical, emotional, or psychological strain. It, without stress, nothing gets done. We have some form of the stress or the other all the time. But if there is an imbalance on that stress, and that's where we get that strain, that the initial, that the problem and, and the managing stress becomes so much difficult. As we know, stress is nothing but our own body's response to anything that requires uh, attention or action. So stress-free is not possible, but stress management is absolutely possible. So I'm going in that regard. Let's move on. Now, as we know, time. The principle of stress management, the most important thing is time. We are all here for a limited period of time. And it is the most valuable currency that we can think of. It's limited in supply and sometimes we use it not so well. So let's use that time that we have in a very well manner. At the same time, be very conscious about other people's time as well. Let's be mindful about everybody else's time as well. So that way we can all be richer in terms of time, the currency, the time we spend in this planet Earth. Second thing we know is all of us, you look around, everybody has a problem. There's no human being that doesn't have a problem of some sorts of the other, except the yogis. <laughs> but the problem is all about solving it. There is a solution to every problem that is there. All we got to do is find that problem where it lies, understand it well, and get rid of it to some extent. That is the one of the best ways of managing stress as well. Because if we are stressful about that problem giving us, you know, all the psychological, physical, mental, all the problem uh, issues, we can always figure that out. We can always take help of others also, like, uh, you know, counseling and all that they talk about. It's, it's nothing, but it's trying to help to find that cause where it is coming from and to remove that, get that out, and then move on with the box. So unboxing the problem is very, very important. And another aspect which we can practice easily is with, with time and the boxing, the problem both uh, combined together is uh, using these red, orange and green light and the gray light. Now what we're trying to do is whenever there is a problem, problem is your red stop, right? There's a problem, it stops you. Then you analyze, of course, you just don't react to a problem and just, oh my God, this has happened now, what to do, what to know. Why did it happen? What could went wrong? Where can it? It's like a post-mortem of a problem. When we do that, that is the analysis part of the problem itself. And then we figure out the solution. And So we can keep that into red, uh, orange, and green aspect. And when we talk about time management, same th principle can be used. Now, red could be things that needs immediate attention. Orange could be things that can be, that needs to be done, but it can be done a little later. Green could be, well, we can uh, get away with it, but uh, it's, it's nice if we do it. And the gray could be, uh, well, even if I don't do it, nothing's going to ha hamper, but uh, I may want to do it, kind of those things. So 
a lot of times you when you get up in the morning just look at it you look at the time you spend now certain times you so categorize them into these colors okay these are the necessary things i gotta do of course i gotta go to the loo i gotta do my daily chores i gotta to brush my teeth those are the red thing in place whereas the orange could be oh i need to wash that uh, wash that clothes you know that clothes can be washed late little later as well or uh, it's like a green thing like oh i gotta watch that movie and understand some of the things that it teaches and all that and gray could be oh well i can um, have that cup of tea or something and which you can avoid also you know <laughs> at times so we gotta figure out where our priority lies and if we can manage our time based on those red orange green and gray priorities i think time management as well as your problem solving could be enhanced in some way or the other uh, now let's let's go to the crux of our own stresses in dentistry on a daily basis dentistry is a tough profession you're talking you're thinking about so many things here you're thinking you're working in a very you know like a microns environment trying to take out all the uh, issues from there try to figure out without hurting the tongue hurting the cheek hurting anything like giving pain in any way so it is it is one of the most stressful job in the planet I feel maybe I'm biased because I'm a dentist, but that's what I feel. But see how we manage. I mean, if we look at it, everything just, you know, bombards us on a daily basis. But we do manage it well, isn't it? First of all, we got to communicate well with the patient. If the patient needs to understand it well, it, does the patient have some medical history? We need to take care of that. How is the oral hygiene going on? Is the area clean? Is the sterilization proper? Do we have any, um, um, like, have we recorded everything well? Have we taken consent from the patient? Are the x-rays and machines, everything in place? Is the temperature of the room ambient so that we can be comfortable? patient could be comfortable is the pain management well is the patient having pain uh, is uh, the uh, supplies there are the instruments clean is the waste disposal in place is the bathroom clean <laughs> is the electricity coming or going if there is um, uh, internet problem or not are the computers working how's my learning going on how's my money coming in is it am I doing the right thing am I economically sound uh, all you know there's so much thing on a daily basis we do but we do it pretty well right so hats off to all of us for doing that but at the same time can we do it better can we make it uh, less stressful for all of us of course we can and one of the best ways to do that is delegation trying to divide work is one of the best thing between the team teamwork after all is the key to getting things done a very complex thing being like made very simple now so I put this into six categories of stress management one of the things is the most important thing as I mentioned earlier is the time time management is the key to success we have limited time, we gotta use it very, very well for us and for others, full stop. Second, the space we work in, is the space clean? Is the space nice? Does it give a good feeling about the place? Does it smell well? Does it look nice? No cluttering around? Does it um, um, like, uh, do you hear a good music when you come in? Do you hear a good tone of voice when the reception says, good morning, please have a seat. Do you get all that? Is that all in our uh, ecosystem? Is very, very important to look at atmosphere needs to be very congenial positive feels feel good you know you when you come to work you feel good about coming to york and that's i think one of the most uh, important thing uh, as well another thing is are we following the rules are we going by the guidelines are we uh, are, are we just doing treatment just out of our well i know this i know that no 
I think every small treatment is very, very important. It may be very small or as minor procedure for you, but for that patient, it is a, everything you do is a major procedure. Because he feels it, he has come, he or she has come to it with a lot of trust to you, and that's where you gotta follow the guidelines, the rules that has been set by the authorities after years and years of understanding. And if we do that, our stresses, stress level itself easily goes down because we know we are following a guideline, we are following our science behind it. The industry is, a, as you know, the confluence between the art and science, right? If the science is right, art is executed well, things go very well. So please follow the rules, follow the guidelines all the time. And uh, the most important thing, again, is after all this is communication. If we are doing everything, but if we're not able to tell the patient what is the right, you know, the, the treatment and the, the causes of his or her problem and how to eradicate that and talk about preventive aspect, talk about all the post-operative issues that she or she may have, all that communication. If everything is clear in the beginning itself, there's less stress. Patient already knows about it. And at the same time, after knowing if we have taken the consent, even better. Because without consent, it sometimes makes us very difficult uh, in the court of law, in the, you know, like patient can say, oh, I didn't know what you're doing and you did it. So informed consent that also, just, just not a consent that we see in most of the hospitals. Oh, oh, oh just, just fill up this form and just sign here. That's not informed consent. Informed consent is you have understood everything. And if you haven't, you ask these questions. Patients should be given time to understand it. If not understood, explained, sit down with the patient. And when we do that, our treatment becomes better. We be practice safer and better in the long run. And the most, most, most important, another C, I mean, there are three Cs here, is collaboration. If we cannot do certain thing, please, please, for heaven's sake, don't do it. Don't do it. Refer, collaborate with others. So just, just don't force it. Oh, I can, you know, maybe try on this page. No, sorry. You have to refer to the things that you do not know how to do to the person who knows better than you. Mind you, the person should know better than you because you, after all, is uh, thinking for the good interest of that patient. You want to send him or her to the person who knows better than you, who will do better than you in that particular aspect. And the patient will come back to you for other care. So that collaboration has to be established and that gets our stress again at a much lower level. Collaboration when we talk about is also teamwork. When we are working with a team of, you know, as a, as a team, collaborating with one another, talking to one another, communicating with one another, it's always the result becomes great. Together, everyone achieves more. Team, T-E-A-M. Teamwork is the most important thing. Next on, let me touch upon a little bit about this area where you must have heard already about IQ and EQ. IQ is our, you know, what we know, our intelligence. Uh, not, and it's not the same in everyone. Some may have very good intelligence. They're the top of the class. They are... They understand things much faster. Uh, they, they have a great IQ. That's intelligence. But what is EQ now? Now let me explain you what EQ is all about. Because IQ alone cannot make you successful in life. You need the combination of EQ along with IQ. And that makes the synergy go at a much rapid pace. Now what's EQ? EQ is nothing but emotional intelligence. The intelligence that is in the form of emotional intelligence. And it's just five parts of it. Daniel Goldman talked about it almost 20 years ago. Now it's taking 
more and more mainstream right now. And it has five components. First is self-realization. We get to find what we are, what are our limits, what are our potential, and we get to understand ourselves. Who am I? You know, I'm talking, it's like a Buddha teaching us actually. Self-realization of who am I? What are my possibilities? What am I in profession also, dentistry also? We can talk about, okay, what are my abilities? What, what all can I do? What are my strengths? And just harness those strengths, work on those strengths so that you become better and better. And whatever weaknesses there are, of course, I'm not good at certain procedure. Learn it. Try to learn it. Understand it more and try to do better and better and better. So it kind of develops you in the long run as well. Another thing is very important is self-regulation. You may have all self-regulation, all that, but if you're not regulated, like if you don't regulate yourself, if you don't um, have a discipline, then it's no, no, you know, like you just say, oh, I've realized and I'm Buddha and like move around, like, <laughs> but to not have that discipline to carry on the right thing, then it's a problem, problem. Another one, another very important component is passion. Passion. We're going to have passion at what we have. We're going to have passion at that treating that patient. We're going to have passion that uh, I want to make this person feel much better. You're going to have passion at, oh my God, I'm going to make his or her smile so much nicer. Oh my God, I'm going to make this guy eat everything. You know, that, that passion has to come from inside. And that it has to be there. What I want to achieve at the end of this is the thing that you got to always think. And that's where motivation comes from. And another most important part is in everything is empathy. Empathy is nothing but being on other person's shoes who you're treating. Let's say you're, in our case, patient. Be on the patient's shoes. Just feel like the patient and say, oh my God, this guy has so much fear, but still he's trusted me and come here and we are like uh, trying to give him a so. If we talk rudely, if we don't show that empathy, if we don't uh, feel for him, basically empathy means feeling for the other. Oh, you're having pain, okay. Um, how long has it been? How, how's it going? How have you managed? Um, okay, I'm gonna get you all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, it'll be fine. You know, these simple words just make so much difference. What else? Okay, sit. What do you have? Pain, okay. Open your mouth, da da da. Come on, we are humans, right? So this empathy will just not work with us in just in the uh, dental world alone, but in everything. If we empathize to another human being, another even animal, the other one will respect and send you back the same waves in a big, better way. So please, empathy in our profession is even more important. And last but not the least, social skills. What are our skills socially? And how do we talk to another person? How do we interact with other people? How are we uh, seen in the society as, uh, uh, of course, not fake, you know, like you don't want to be a fake guy, social here, there, just trying to show. I mean, sometimes it works, but uh, long term, it will not be conducive. So social skills, we got to take create um, it's, it's a learning thing so all this emotional intelligence can be learned whereas iq is you what you're born with but eq can be learned we can harness it we can we can learn it in our own way and uh, i can talk more about it in the days to come if you're interested on this uh, you can also go on to my blog where you can see some of my thoughts and we can always discuss and um, you know just just Tell me anything. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem that uh, you criticize me or, you know, give me feedback in any constructive way. I have no problem. Like, But let's learn from one another. That's why, I'm, why I feel we are here for. Uh, with that, I would like to just wrap up with again saying, so you got to be have a time management in our mind, in our practice. We got to have uh, uh, atmosphere congenial, positive atmosphere. We need to follow the rules. We need to have communication going on the right way. We need to collaborate with one another and we get to have consent to everything we do. And that this will, this will bring stress 
this this is a simple there may there may be so many other things but this these are the few of the areas which can bring us so much uh, stress uh, lesser stress with that uh, let me just go in i mean like look at this i mean what i do in a daily basis is uh, this kind of work tooth wear big problem with stress right so we try to quantify it we try to record it we try to do non-invasive procedures like composites and all that and maintain it uh this is a four years case uh, that's been still going on of course i mean we ma maintain it at the same time we do uh preventive work uh bite wings and uh, implants and uh, root canals i mean somebody's messed up and you gotta fix it and you know we, we we do that in a daily basis but if we follow those six things in a proper way i think our we can do things much better and it becomes a much um, easier for us uh, to go on in our life with less of stress and more of happiness and that's what we are here for thank you thank you for your time and have a great day thank you and if you like this you can always subscribe and i will Whatever I put on any video, you'll get notified. So hang in there and have a stress-free life. Thank you.